hello hello just in case this video looks very random to you it really isn't i still do video essays but i like to just talk about my experiences sometimes and most especially living in korea working in korea and say studying in korea if you're interested in anything related to korea you can check the playlist living in korea on this channel so today we're going to be talking about survival tips university survival tips once you've cracked the code for seoul national university you should be able to use that same code in any place anywhere you are in Korea and in any other country so stay with me till the end the first video I uploaded on this channel was talking about my graduation from Seoul National University as the only Nigerian student. Sorry, not really talking about, which is why I'm actually doing this sit down and chit chat video. It was just a few clips put together showing that I've graduated. I just wanted to put something online. That was really my opening to this YouTube channel. So that you can check out that video. There's really nothing to see there, but I feel like a lot of people that clicked on that video wanted to see more. Let's just cut through all of that and go straight to the tips. First of all, I would like to say ask questions. Very cliche, right? But how many times have you asked questions about something you don't know? We tend to feel so much shame to ask questions, but this is honestly the best thing you can do for yourself. You know that question that someone is probably going to say is a very stupid question. <laughs> that question you're probably thinking about, just go ahead and ask, which means while you're watching this video, any question that comes to your mind or that pops up to your mind, just like put it in the comments and I'll try to respond to you. Meanwhile, I'm talking about the real system, right? When you are in the system, try as much as possible to ask questions. No question is a stupid question. I said ask question. This is like the biggest thing. But what kind of questions should you be asking? That's where like the real tips lie. The first tip I would like to talk about is first ask how to register for courses. This is probably most important for freshmen or new students, but it's very important. It's like this ritual you have to do every semester, right? The beginning of every semester. This is going to make or break your whole experience. And if you're a freshman, it's probably going to determine if you're going to be spending six more months, one more year, two more years in the university. So you probably need to ask how to register for courses. When I was in SNU the first time I came to this school, of course we had an orientation for foreign students, but little did I know that that orientation they did for foreign students was really of no use, honestly speaking. Korean students did their own orientation very separately, foreign students did their orientation very separately. So the foreign students, I feel like they were just trying to give us more of like a moral or like an emotional support more than the practical things we should be doing in the school. So I'll be giving you a few of those here. A lot of people might just downplay it and feel like, oh yeah, I'm in first year and the Koreans will be in your ear telling you that first year is not important. You can mess up your first year. It's okay. First year is for party, clubbing and all of that. Second year is important. No, no, no. First year is actually important. Why? In first year, you probably need to take a few courses. Otherwise, you might not be able to start your second year very properly. So you need to know that some important courses have to be taken in first year. Also, you need to know that some classes once you don't register for them well honestly speaking they are going to mess up your whole four years you probably need to do five years which is going to cost you from five thousand dollars to ten thousand dollars depending on the school and on the course snu is pretty less pricey compared to other schools so it might be cheaper on that side but if you go to some schools i think yonsei is said to be very 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 costly if you go to some schools you might be paying a lot and if you're a scholarship student you honestly don't want to be doing any of that right now, in my own case, I didn't know that there was something called Yebi Sugang Singchong. That's like pre-registration. You have to first of all do that, have that unlock before you get to the day where you have to do the real registration. If they tell you that the registration is going to start by 9 p.m., please be in front of your computer by 8.45 okay that's a stretch but honestly i would be in front of my computer at 8 45 so they'll tell you it's going to start 9 to maybe 5 p.m or maybe 6 p.m in the evening you'll be jacking last do you know what that term means you'll be you'll be honestly you just be taking the complete l if you think that you'll be able to register at 12 because it's the whole day oh no and you know one annoying thing with the whole system here once anything is concerning registration the system automatically reboots after 10 minutes so one thing i would say is three minutes before nine refresh your portal and then you have that space of like five to ten to seven minutes to figure out your course registration if you are going to open your laptop nine o'clock because the registration period is nine o'clock you're jacking last you're taking the l 
one thing you want to make sure of is that you're in a place of very speedy internet now korea is great with their internet and all of that but because there's going to be so much congestion and so much traffic on the site it could be a problem so many people go to all these gaming sites where they have the perfect internet to do registration so make sure you're not staying back in your home where you're using your data no 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 don't even try to do that don't try to register on your phone too go to a system you're sure of the internet the next tip i'll be giving is ask for the total number of courses you should be taking and if you should be taking those classes in korean or in english be sure of what you're taking because some courses even if they have the same name in english and in korean the English class could be elective and the Korean class is the important one. If you go ahead and take those classes in English, it might not count for the number of credits you should be taking. So you should ask if it's okay to take those classes in English or in Korean. Most of the time you can take both interchangeably, but sometimes some professors might not want you to take the English class. They want you to take the Korean one. So be clear with that. Another question you should ask, which is an important tip is if you can take a minor. So if you're majoring in computer science, for example, you could be able to take a minor in maybe design. So you should be able to know all of this very early on to study in. So you'll be able to plan out everything. So you'll be able to graduate in four years. Otherwise, you may, might be graduating in six years, in seven years, who knows? So try as much as possible to plan out these things very early on. If you can take some minors, because sometimes your minor and your major might be able to share the same course. So for example, you can take a three credits course for your major and it's going to be working for your minor. You know what I mean? Or your affiliate minor or major. So ask if you can take a minor very early on and if you want to or you're interested in taking anything, just be aware of what you're doing very early on so you can plan out your schedule. Schedule is life. It's life. Your calendar is literally your life. Oh, back in those days, really, all of my friends, we all have it. It's like our home screen is our calendar, everything, our background on our phone, on our laptops. Interesting. <laughs> so my next tip is ask if you have an advisor. For me, I didn't know I had an advisor or a mentor or anything close to that until maybe two years after being in the school. I was just winging it, honestly. Like I said, I was going to school, coming back home and just trying my best to keep to my schedule. But I did not know about any mentorship or any professor that was supposed to take care of me. And I found out I had someone because they made me to go sign something. So you should know all of these things. Know if you have an advisor. While this did not really affect me, it could have benefited me. So people might not really like this idea because in Korea, there's a top down system kind of thing. So the professors are kind of always right and they might really make you do things or if you're a science student, you might not exactly like the system. However, there's really nothing wrong with knowing because it could provide more benefit to you than more harm, I think especially for undergraduates for because if you're in masters and phd then that's like a no-brainer it's going to be there forever and ever but if you're an undergrad you might not know so if you're going in as an undergraduate student just find out these things and see if that person can be of benefit because a lot of professors in snu actually have very quality spec so you might want to benefit from that so i think there's a need to address the uh, should i say mentor mentee or advisor and a student kind of um say relationship because it's very important that young people have guidance most of us are just living this life as it comes it's like okay if it works out for me glory be to god and if it doesn't then hell i'm going to criticize the school system till thy kingdom come we need to do something about this thing because everybody needs mentorship i think everybody needs guidance and everybody needs not just career guidance everybody needs mental guidance everybody need a few of these kind of things people to help them outside of their family okay just saying let's move on ask for books outside of the recommended books i've noticed one thing once you're studying abroad you need to study by yourself now like you're probably going to teach yourself 90 percent of the things that you know so you need to be reading books outside of the recommended books or outside of these books that the professors provide you you probably need to read those ones for exams or not but you need to have your own kind of like list outside of what is provided in the schedule so this one your maybe classmates or the seniors in that particular um, department can help you with that when i like a professor i easily get an a in that professor's class and when i don't like the professor of course i could get a c and it's actually happened to me and a c in my school is actually fail <laughs> so it's crazy because you see people hustling to take a class again when they get a b 
you're going to see crazy things i was so shocked the first time i saw my friend got a b in her class and she was like she needs to take this class again next semester i was like why what b is a great grade what what's going on and she's like no 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 you, she does not want to graduate with any b so she's going to retake the class you need to block out all of those noises and just focus on yourself i think a b is all right but a lot of people don't think the same so you might see people trying to take a course again because they got a b so you don't want to put yourself in any of these so just try to avoid it as a preventive measure you probably need to be teaching yourself a whole lot more than you think oh my god independence independence this is so i don't know if i've even gotten a handle of this myself but it's one of the things that you you probably become very skillful at when you're learning in the school the next tip is ask if some volunteering can serve as extra point so some people they like to take some things outside like some extracurricular activities to cover their grades i'm not really a fan of that so i'd rather just write my exams honestly than to go into some other kind of like extracurricular activities but i find that a lot of people like to do this so they can take this instead of credits and it will be fine for them and sometimes they're like one credit and you just have one credit hanging without <laughs> graduating you probably need to graduate with like 130 credits and you have 129 oh my god how can i graduate you can just take one volunteering course it's like one credit sometimes so this can be very helpful for you not a lot of people know about it so that's why i think it's nice that i share it all right this is going to be the end if you have any questions regarding anything let me know I'll probably do a part two, but who knows? Let's see. Thank you very much for watching. Like, comment, share, subscribe, anything you want to do with it. I'll see you in my next video.